What's going on guys, it is Murdering here, back with another Raid Shadow Legends video, and today we're going to be talking about login rewards, since they are the only truly free champions you do get in this game. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to be doing stage 20 of the Dragon's Lair, using only login rewards. I'll show you the champions, I'll show you the gear, and while that might not be the most efficient way, I will do one kind of swap in for this dungeon to show you a quicker time with the champion than you can actually farm from the campaign. And as you can see, that champion is going to be War Maiden, but we're not going to use her yet. Let's do the first run with Visix here so we can see what these champions do. Now, I do have a guide on. I am pretty sure every single champion here, maybe not Haikatoon, I would have to check on that, but I know Visix, Brush, Sill, and Yaga the Insatiable, I believe. Pretty sure I have a video on Yaga. If not, I've definitely used Yaga in the clan boss before. He's not that good in the clan boss, but he's still fine for a poisoner. But in case you want to check those videos out, you definitely can. So as we can see here, this is kind of a perfect example of a control team. What does control mean? Heavy emphasis on the CC, reducing their turn meter, applying debuffs like decreased speed on the champions that people often overlook in this game and once again visix with that a1 provoking ally protection and reducing the turn meter all the time it really goes to show you how even though i don't have defense down which is where war maiden actually will come in handy later on i do have the advantage of kind of controlling the entire wave this pretty much guarantees I'm taking a very small amount of damage simply based on the amount of turns these champions get. And once again, I will show you the gear and the stats I'm using on all of these champions as you can probably imagine. Since I did do it for my Syl video, she isn't a stun set. I felt like stun really complemented her the best. Now, some may say it might be overkill to have Hikatoon and Syl on the same team. They both have speed benefits to themselves. Haikatoon does have that speed leader aura, which is definitely helpful. You can definitely use Yaga for increased accuracy since Spider's definitely a tricky dungeon or free champions like this. So you can definitely play around with that and work around if you actually need the speed or not, which is going to be important. You don't want to be using auras that you're not getting full benefit out of. And I've talked about this before with dungeons. A lot of people try to hit these speed thresholds that don't really make sense all you really want to do is make sure you're going before the enemy wave applying some type of cc to them to prevent them from getting a turn and the goal isn't to go two three times before they go once simply based off of raw speed that's extremely hard to do even with end game gear so the main point being don't overshoot your speed. I see lots of players doing it. Well, I'll see champions where they're at 240, 230 for dungeons and they say this is something I need. You only really need to be faster than the waves and the dragon. So 200 speed is definitely a safe spot for like the high end threshold. Obviously, everybody always has a fast champion. There's no harm in bringing a fast champion to this where they're using them in arena also, so on and so forth. But as you can imagine, without showing the champions already, most of them, I believe all of them in fact, besides Sill as War Master, which is going to help a ton once we get to the dragon. As we can see, this is taking a bit long. And once again, you can only expect so much from Logan War champions when trying to force synergy among three champions like this. There's no defense down. There's not really a consistent poisoner. Well, Yaga is good and he will get the job done in a very safe way. He's not the most consistent poisoner. You can definitely use someone like the uncommon champion outlaw monk he's a champion that i used on a second account for quite some time pretty much all the way through nightmare clan boss and i really enjoyed using that champion he also works in dungeons but he does require a reviver as well so basically this is going to take on average about five minutes and 30 seconds i believe from all the runs i've tested so far there definitely is some rng to it how many poisons yaga is going to place on this dragon here but that's going to be the kind of main concept of this team here simply focused on control rush a unreal and i really mean that healer in this game where he can constantly keep your team topped off we do have ally protection from someone like a visix so she is going to be taking a ton of damage here and uh one thing I probably never showed you guys is the uh, 
actually drag and hack you can do. So if you want, you can actually hide behind this pillar here to reduce your damage. You learn something new every single day. So if you're on the computer, right click. If you're on the phone, use your two fingers and kind of twist it like this. So hide behind the pillar. This will protect you. And this is a murdering guarantee on that. So that's my tip of the day for you fine viewers. If you're looking to progress in any dungeon, find yourself a pillar. Make sure you're hovering behind it. When the dragon gets a turn, you will be safe. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait until we get to that end screen. Go over the statistics and we'll see how each champion did individually. All right, so as we can see here from our breakdown, we do have Hykatoon doing 382,000 damage. Rush the Mangler doing 842. Yaga, 1.7 million, obviously being the Poisoner. Sill of the Drakes doing 363,000. And finally, Visix the Unbowed doing 675,000 damage. Now let's go over how I geared these champions. And the first champion we'll be talking about is Visix the Unbowed. I chose to give Visix a shield set not because you actually need a shield set this is one free piece of gear and she probably isn't most optimal in a shield set but it definitely will help moving on throughout the dungeon waves giving you that extra layer of protection even though you don't really need it and really quickly i will click on all of the gear in case you are curious as to what i'm actually using here and you can pause it as you see fit i will do this for all the champions these are her masteries here i do not have this champion booked at all now let's move to Sill of the Drakes, here she is once again, I believe. Okay, so no books in Sill as well. She is once again in a stun set as well as a speed set here. And once again, you can pause if you want to check out the individual pieces more closely. These are the masteries I chose for her. They are the same as the video I did release on them. I can't imagine I would have changed them since I don't really use these champions in my day-to-day -day raid activities. These are the masteries for Yaga the Insatiable. And as far as artifacts go, I didn't put a lot of thought into Yaga because I knew his main point was going to be a poison champion. We do want to give him some survivability so he doesn't get one shot over and over again, but we do have the benefit of having a reviver on the team. This champion is fully booked, I do know that. Finally, we have Grush, another champion that's simply amazing. One of the better lock and rewards, in my opinion. He is also fully booked. He is using a stalwart gear set. And this is from a clan boss team. Quite a few clan boss teams that I've actually showcased on this champion here. And these are his masteries here. Finally, we have Aikatoon here. These are her masteries. And she has one book in the A1, one book in the A2, and one in the A3. For her gear, it's very straightforward. I just gave her not a ton of speed, but whatever leftover speed gear I did have lying around. I didn't bother upgrading the ring or the neck because I'd, I felt like I had enough tankiness on Sill of Drakes with that revive to be able to get me through this content just in case this champion does in fact die. So now we did see the time before and it was rather long. And most people probably are going to have a ton of options. So the point of this video isn't really to show you what it's like throwing in all of these free champions together. There are definitely more options. We do have Tainix Hate Flower here. And if you were part of that Twitch Prime deal, you do have champion like Bala, who's also very strong. But simple champions like War Maiden, Hey Rel, Cold Heart, whoever you can insert into this team. Now that you've kind of seen how the actual login champions actually interact with each other, you can kind of get a good idea on who you want to use synergy wise, who you can add, who you can replace to reduce that time and get times as low as two minutes, minute and a half, so on and so forth. It only gets better with the better gear and the better synergy you find for your personal account. So I did tell you I would run one of these with the swap of War Maiden. So let's do that really quick just to show you actually how big a defense down champion is going to be for this and the damage is going to be significantly better. It would be more optimal if I had 100% crit rate on all of these champions. I have them on most, but not on all, which was definitely a kind of fault on my part. But for a team like this, while you do want to kind of lean towards solid output on the champions, one major importance since the team before did not have a defense down is making sure you were tanking enough to survive all of these waves all the way through, which is going to be a bigger point than a lot of people think. 
No, I chose to replace Visix because it seemed to make the most sense to me personally because she is the furthest login reward down the line, I'm pretty sure. It has been quite some time since I finished those. So it would just make the most sense as you might not have Visix. And if you do, maybe you already have a better replacement for that champion already. I highly recommend someone like War Maiden or any defense down champion. Obviously, if you have a Draco Morph, you're going to be using Draco Morph and he's going to make this run piece of cake for you. But other than that, War Maiden is a perfectly fine substitute in this scenario here. We will kind of wait and see what we do on the Dragon Boss. All right, so we're finally at the Dragon Boss and you are going to see right away, once that defense down actually gets placed on the boss, the fact that all of these champions besides Syl have War Master, the damage that's going to be put onto the dragon is going to be significantly higher than the last run. We're already at the boss and we are at two minutes and about 18 seconds. Pretty much 75% of the health has already been taken. His inhale, what is it called? Let's see. I believe it's his A3. So inhale right here unlocks a secret skill. The shield is already getting depleted at a much faster rate simply because War Maiden was insert into this team here. And just in case you're curious, I will show you her gear after this. One thing I did forget to do is the quick, I guess, life hack for raid that I showed you where we do hide in front of this pillar here. We can enjoy the really fine aesthetics of this, uh, I guess, rune carving graffiti, however you really want to label it. Okay, so the breath takes you out of the pillar. And it's up to the player. Uh oh. Send help. Wait. Okay, I'm blocked. This is one of those um, in-game mechanics where they try to prevent you from having fun. And they do know about this hack, which is why you can't fully go behind the pillar when he does inhale. So that's that. And now we're going to wait until the end screen here. And I will show you the final damage with this defense down champion being War Maiden. All right, so here we can see our breakdown. You can kind of compare it to the last run. 424,000 damage from Haikatoon, 803 from Grush, 1.2 from Yaga, 3.8 from Sile, and 1.1 from War Maiden herself. This was actually a low RNG run for this team. The best I've done with this team was actually three minutes and 15 seconds. So quite a considerable swing there based on the amount of poisons Yaga and more maiden put and also some crit rng on the waves itself so you can definitely use this team three minutes or four minutes isn't that bad if you're just using these free champions you got if you've been very unlucky in pulling shards progression and these are the only champions you actually have to work with so really quickly as promised i'm going to show you war maiden's gear here we have pretty basic speed gear she is way too fast i will admit i'm not really sure what i used her for but she's definitely way too fast. Mastery is the same as every other champion. She is fully booked here, but once again, looking at her overall stats, 223 speed, you definitely don't need that. You only really need her to go after any turn meter booster and before your main AOE damage dealers actually get a chance to actually provide some damage. So that's all you have to focus on. Don't worry too much about the 223 speed. As I definitely went above and beyond what you actually need. All right, guys, so that's going to wrap up my video today for the free login reward champions. I'm going to be doing this for the Ice Golem run. I'm going to test a few things out for the Fire Knight. It will be a bit difficult since the Fire Knight isn't as ideal with the kits based on the login reward, especially since Lord the Legionary is blue affinity like they seem to label every single champion in this game instead of something more useful we definitely need more spirit champions that's for sure the same thing applies with spider i'll see if i can figure something out with spider only using login reward champions if you have an idea definitely leave it in the comments below i will try it out as always guys if you enjoyed this content don't forget to subscribe smash that like button turn on the notification bell and i will see you all in my next upload